Ten point underdogs at home against the Bears this week. I'm a big fan of chaos. This team delivers. It's pitiful. I mean, offensively, it is pitiful when you look at what they have. Don't look at me that way. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> what am I going to say? What am I going to say? What am I going to say? I have been telling you that my concern all along has been about the quarterbacks. It has gotten even worse. And some of it is kind of predictable. I said about poor Derek Anderson. He's 35. He looked 45. By the end of the game, he's 55. And I said by Monday night, he's going to be 65. And I saw him getting helped off the field with a concussion. And, you know, then you, now you sign Matt Barkley to come in. Every quarterback they've had on the roster has a career number of more interceptions than touchdowns, except for A.J. McCarron, the one guy they cut loose. They have done as poor a job putting this quarterback room together and organizationally play in the position of quarterback that any coach in the NFL has done. And I think they are totally to blame for themselves. They've even been unfair to Nate Peterman, who's going to start, because he shouldn't have been playing, shouldn't have been playing again, and now should not be the starter, but he has to be. But he could it could be redemption, though. Sean! Oh, Bill, redemption! <laughs> you know what they always say? You need seven tries to get it right. Like, if this guy built birdhouses, he would have been out of the birdhouse game a long, long time ago. Like, my birdhouse doesn't have a roof. Like, that's the end of the birdhouse building, right? But no, I do feel bad for Nate Peterman. You're yeah. right, because it's not his fault. He wants a job, and he's not going to say no to the starting position. It's interesting to bring that up, that now it's predictable. Because, I mean, somebody's been predicting what was going to happen the entire freaking time this is going on. Here's what I don't understand, okay? That would be you, right? Uh -oh. <laughs> All right. Just right. making it clear. Here's what I don't get. Like, let's give McDermott the mistakes all the way up to Josh Allen getting hurt, right? Let's give him a pass on all of that. Forget all of the disaster that has happened up until injury to Josh Allen. The Bills signed Matt Barkley this week, right? Nate Peterman has never finished an NFL start that he's had, ever, due to injury or interception. Matt Barkley's going to play on Sunday at some point. It's an inevitability. It's going to happen. When Josh Allen got hurt and you had to sign Derek Anderson, you know you were a 35-year-old quarterback injury away from having one healthy quarterback on your roster. Why? Why do you not go find some young quarterback, undrafted free agent that no one's ever heard of, and put him on your practice squad to have a body that knows the offense to put on the field in case of emergency, which we're now in again? Like, just when you think he can't make any more mistakes with the quarterback situation, he does it again. Because we're going to have Matt Barkley taking legitimate snaps in that game against the Bears on Sunday. And you don't think Khalil Mack is going to have the greatest return <laughs> homecoming college of all time looking at what's happening here? He, he can't even make it better when it's the worst it's ever been. You buying the birdhouse reference? Well... <laughs> I mean, to me, I look at, we talk, I was on the show during camp, and we talked about the three quarterbacks. You know, they shipped off A.J. McCarron for basically nothing. They had to, the, the fact that they, they continue to say, well, Nate Peterman's great in practice, it just bothers the heck out of me because at some point, you got to put it together in a game. And they had A.J. McCarron, uh, of, they could have kept A.J. McCarron. There was, they didn't have to get rid of him. And I'm not sure that A.J. McCarron would save the season, and he's certainly not the greatest quarterback in NFL history, but I can tell you that I'm pretty confident A.J. McCarron's better than Nate Peterman, yeah. and he would give them a better chance to win right now than Peterman does. Well, I, I will say, in fairness to them, they, even with all their mistakes, even McDermott knows. He did not want to go back to Peterman. He he put himself in a position to be forced to do that. Well, he did it for a time! Okay. No, I'm saying is he knows. He knows. Uh -huh. he, his only move would have been to replace, back to in your point, replace him. He does not want to go to him. He did not want to go to him before. He put himself in this spot. It, it's pitiful. He started Derek Anderson, who had been there a week and a half ahead of him. So what I'm saying is the logical side to McDermott is saying, I can't play Peterman, but the, practice, but the other side of him I, I, is, is stuck with him. It's, it was a mistake that just keeps compounding and compounding But and compounding. it compounds because you do nothing about it. Yeah. It's like you come home, your house is on fire, you put dinner in the oven, you call the kids to read a story, you go outside three hours later and go, my house is even more on fire. That's a better reference than I me. like the birdhouse bird reference. Thank birdhouse you. Birdhouse was bad. Do some uh, picks. Bills, uh, bills are getting 10. Uh, if Peterman's starting, no. They're not covering 10 points. It's not going to happen. Got another game? Uh, I like the Rams-Saints matchup, just as a matchup, period. But I think with the Saints being two and a half dogs, they don't cover that two and a half points against the Rams. All right. I like the, I like the Bears and the Bills game. Uh, I like Texas, the Texans even at Denver. Yeah, that's going to be a good one, too. Uh, I'm going to take the Bears giving the points, and the Bears should not be giving 10 points to anybody. But I'll take them because I just don't see the Bills' offense doing anything. And uh, I'm going to take the Redskins giving two and a half. Atlanta's not a good road team. Redskins are playing solid football. Bills opened as an eight and a half dog, went to ten, which usually 
Chicago's well, defense. Minnesota Chicago's play, defense yeah. is good enough, and Peterman's turnover prone enough to cover that number on their own. You too. I'll take the Bears, and then I'll take the Saints as home underdogs. Anytime they're home underdogs, I'll take them. They're playing LA. I understand that the Rams are clearly the favorite to win the Super Bowl at the moment, but uh, Saints at all, as a home underdog for sure. 